<laughs> Catherine, welcome to the program. Hello. How did you get into theater? Um, I started when I was seven. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, was looking for something to do over the summer, so mom signed me up for a theater camp at uh, the community college back when it was MoCo before it was really Lone Star. Yeah. Okay. And um, it was like a a two week thing, and we put on a bunch of a bunch of numbers, and from then on, I was completely hooked. And it wasn't a musical, was it? It was. It was like putting on musical numbers. Right. It was like a Broadway review type thing. Mm-hmm. And um, from then on, I just did show after show after show, starting with Oklahoma Junior. Oklahoma <laughs> <laughs> Junior. Yeah, yes, right. Oklahoma Junior. And then from then on, I've just been in shows completely nonstop. Like the longest I've been without a show was just before the show. It had been a year and a half. Really? Why yeah. is that? Well, because I went to college. Well, yeah, but and as a freshman, theater in college? I mean, I'm a musical theater major, but as a yeah. freshman, they don't really cast a lot of freshmen. Huh. And so I was, you know, in the final round for all right. of the callbacks for the leads of the shows, but didn't get cast because mm-hmm. I was a freshman. Right. Um, so I was going through some serious withdrawal. So it was really exciting when Tina offered me this role. Well, which you said it's interesting because you, get, because, you know, we don't always get emails from people that are at school out of state. You uh-huh. know, like, I'd like to I do this. And usually that's kind of odd, but but, but I'm glad you did. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad to where I have you. It's been It's going to work out uh, great. Why musical theater? Because it's the only thing I'm good at. No, I, I don't believe that. <laughs> Come on. No, it's, um, it's actually the only thing that I feel like I can really do to make a difference in the world. Really? Yeah. Because, I mean, both of my parents work in medicine, but... Wow. There's no way that I was going to be able to do that. Blood makes right. me sick, I think. <laughs> I'm a fainter. Every single time. I do too, so that's yeah. right. Fine. And so I just, I don't know, I want to make a difference. And because as a kid, I watched a lot of theater and mm-hmm. was obsessed. And um, it changed my life. It kept me out of trouble through high school mm-hmm. and has kept me on the right track. Right. And if I can do that for just one person, then it's totally worth it. Well, that's what I mean. That's really our philosophy of, of theater is mm-hmm. that most of the time it's just entertainment. But every now and then you get this one story that somebody will tell mm-hmm. you that has changed their life. Mm-hmm. And some, it can be the smallest thing. Yep. The smallest thing. And you go like, wow, that changed your life. Sometimes it's a, it's a hello. Mm-hmm. I know it, it, it sounds cheesy and trite, and, but it's true. It's so true. It's so true. And I mean, for me, for a few years in there, my sisters had a lot of trouble. So theater was my safe haven. Right. And so it just, you know, for me, it was a safe place to be and a right. place that I felt at home and a family that, you know, wasn't fighting a lot. Right. And so it was home for me. Wow. So what show really changed it for you when you were small? When I was 15 years old, I auditioned for 13, the musical, okay. mm-hmm. at Applause. Mm-hmm. And they told me I looked too old. And so there was a director who was writing a musical. Mm-hmm. And wanted me to be her lead. Right. And I'd never been a lead at that point. Right. I had always been ensemble and little featured parts. Mm-hmm. And so she wrote the show around my two best friends and I. Mm-hmm. And it was called Journey to Broadway. And it was crazy to feel the weight of a show on my shoulders. And it was the best feeling in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that was that was the deciding moment when I realized, wow, I really want to do this with my life. And mm-hmm. from then on, it was just musical theater or bust, Broadway or bust, pretty much. And, um, yeah. And there's your train to get to Broadway. Yeah, there's my train. I'm headed to New York. See you. So do you think of yourself more as a singer, dancer, or actress? I'm a singer first. Right. Um, definitely, I'm a singer right. first. And then I, the disciplines go singing, dancing, acting, or singing, mm-hmm. acting, dancing for right. me. I consider myself a really good mover. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely not a dancer. Yet. Yet. Mm-hmm. Yet. Um, I think I'm a decent actress. Mm-hmm. I know that I have a long ways to go. Mm-hmm. Because I'm only 19, I don't really have enough life experience yet mm-hmm. to be a superstar actress. But I know I'll get there because mm-hmm. taking classes every day at school and everything. And that just it comes with experience. Right. But definitely a singer first. I've got nine years of vocal training. Right. So. Well, that's interesting because we I remember we had a, a lady who her background was music. Mm-hmm. But she hadn't acted before. And she's doing the miracle worker for us. And something's just not quite right. And 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 director wasn't able, you know, they were, they were talk to us, but they couldn't quite give her the right motivation. Mm-hmm. I said, I think I know the motivation. And I said, how do you interpret a piece of music? Yep. Do that for your role. 
Yep. Next day, it was kind of like, what the hell happened? <laughs> it really is, yes. though, when you yes. put it in terms that somebody can really understand yes. and sink their teeth into. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's kind of how I look at it. Like, when you start a song, it's because the emotions are too strong mm -hmm. to keep speaking. Right. And so, because singing is it's my favorite thing to do. Well, I love singing. <laughs> well, well, tell me about L. How much of L is really you, and how much is this is just a little fantasy role that you you happen to inhabit for a few hours? I'd say like ninety five percent L is actually me. <laughs> <laughs> no, come no, on. Really no, really though, oh. I pink's always been my favorite color. Yeah, pink and purple are my favorite colors, and um, I've always been thought of as kind of the dumb blonde. Even though I know I'm really smart, I really right. am smart, but I'm right. a little ditzy. Right, and. So that, that comes off. But does that work to your advantage sometimes? Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. And I just, my favorite part about Elle is that behind the pretty face, she's really smart and really right. intelligent. Mm -hmm. And I felt, I mean, I felt that that's kind of who I am. That, right. I mean, I know that I'm good looking. Right. And I know that I'm smart, but right. I know that that doesn't always come off to people. And right. sometimes they judge me because, you know, I'm bleach blonde and right. I'm tall and I'm right. leggy. Well, but that's that's our society, though, mm -hmm. right? We want to classify everyone, you know, and label them quickly, mm -hmm. right? And usually, it's that first impression, right? I see that. Okay, so they look pretty, so they must be dumb. Yep. I don't know why we think that, but that's you know. Well, because pretty right? people can't be smart. Oh, we're glasses. They can't have everything. They must be smart. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> the glasses? What does that have to do with anything? You know. So you say you use that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. How how do you use that to your advantage during like say, in college? Um, I mean, it helps. Because people tend to trust people who don't seem as smart. I don't know really? why. I don't know. At least, they don't think you're going to reveal their secrets? Yeah. People trust me a lot. And I don't really know why because I kind of have a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, why are you telling me this? It's mainly because I have no filter. I just kind of say the first thing that comes to my head. And it's mm -hmm. gotten better as I've gotten older. Right. But I really I really have trouble with not having a filter. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, people just trust me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the blonde. Maybe it's the green eyes. I don't know what it is. But mm -hmm. people just trust me and tell me stuff. And I'm like, why are you telling me this? Like, I can't keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> So have you lived this area the entire time? Yeah. Other than going to college? Right. Yeah, I uh, grew up in the woodlands. I was born okay. and raised in the woodlands. Right. And you've seen a lot of changes, really, over of that time as well. Oh, my goodness, yes. Oof, oof. It has not changed for the better, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it, it used to be this really nice little bubble. And... Yes, they do refer to it as the bubble. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Leaving the bubble was really difficult. Because <laughs> it's like, I, I like to think that I'm really street smart. Right. But then I left the woodlands and I was like, oh, my God, I don't know anything, mm -hmm. um, especially living in Greeley, Colorado. It's mm -hmm. like kind of one of the gang capitals of the world. Really? Like, there are a lot. Of, there's a lot of gang activity in Greeley. Like I don't go outside after 5 p.m. alone because it's scary. <laughs> OK. So, if it's... Yeah. Like if you leave campus, yeah. campus is really, really nice. Right. Leaving campus. It's right. really not. So I stay on campus. But um Back so why did bubble. you pick there? Oh, why did I pick there? Okay. I did 18 college auditions. Okay. That's a lot. And it was a really stressful senior mm -hmm. year. I got accepted a lot of places for acting, a few places for vocal performance. Mm -hmm. And I got into two really good schools for musical theater. Mm -hmm. One of them was Northern Colorado, and one was called Cap 21 in Manhattan. Okay. And I visited Northern Colorado. And my mom grew up in Colorado. Okay. My grandma's yeah. from there. So I've always had a special place in my mm -hmm. heart for Colorado. And I got there, and it was just... It clicked. Mm -hmm. And I love the program. I love the people. Yeah. I love Colorado. The cold's kind of hard. But <laughs> I I adore it. And mm -hmm. the program is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. They're my people. I don't mm -hmm. know. It was, it was the coolest thing in the world to get there and make my nerdy musical theater jokes and have everybody laugh at them. Oh, they got it. Yeah, they got it. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm such a nerd when it comes to theater. Like, my favorite class that I've taken so far has been musical theater history. History. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, he, like, the professor just lectured for the first half of the class. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we watched videos. Right. And it was my favorite class ever. I got a perfect score in the class because it was my favorite. And I was like, oh, I already know all this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just study it in my free time. Right. And so, um, but yeah, the school just clicked. Mm -hmm. And it's been the best decision that I ever made. Like, my college audition coach mm -hmm. said the audition process is the hardest thing that you will ever go through. Mm -hmm. And you'll end up where you belong. It may not seem like it, but right. you will end up where you belong. And he was so right. Because, I mean, auditioning at 18 schools, you get a lot of rejections. 
And it it's was hard. Really we, were hard. we were just talking about that. Yeah, just talking about yeah rejection as an actor, right? And so there's a lot hard. of that. It's like, why didn't I get picked? And why didn't I do this? And you know, we've sat on both sides. We've been director. We've been, and, mm-hmm. and it's still hard. It's so hard. It's always hard because we're always putting ourselves out there. You know, mm-hmm. um, rejection's hard always, but. I don't know why. why. Does it seem harder because we're in theater or no? Well, because it's so personal, I yeah. think. Because you're bearing your soul mm-hmm. to someone and you're showing them, you know, you. Right. The truest version of yourself mm-hmm. when you're auditioning and you're so vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And then to have it feel like you're not enough right. when you get the rejection. And it's not even always because you're not enough. It's not always because you're not good enough. Sometimes it's just you don't fit yeah. the director's vision. And that's what I try to keep in mind. It's hard. It's hard to say that because until you're the director, or you're, it's your production, you do whatever the heck you want. Exactly. It, it's like uh, yeah, you know, you're you're great, but it doesn't. Like I said it's this whole picture it just we're trying to make. It doesn't fit the picture, right. yeah. and that's what I always try to keep in mind. It's not because I wasn't good enough. It's not because they didn't like me. It's because I didn't fit their vision. Still hurts. It still sucks. <laughs> it, it, still it sucks. sucks. It sucks. The hardest, the hardest rejection that I've ever gotten though was, oh, you're too tall. Have you, you've seen Tootsie, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're too tall. You're too short. Yeah. You're too big. You're small. You're not. You're too old. Too too young. <laughs> it's like what is it? I could be taller. I could be shorter. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I told Tina that that um, multiple times. I haven't gotten cast because the director thought I was too tall, and she right. said, "Oh, you won't ever have that problem in New York. All the men are over six feet. You're perfect." Yeah, yeah no, because I think I was, you know, it's like I'm five seven, but I'm short compared to most actors. Mm-hmm. All the actors seem like they're all six plus, except like Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is really short. <laughs> so what does he wear? Platform shoes when we're on a scene? He yes. wears heels. Or I he know like that they've done that, right? Stool. There's, yeah. yeah, there are some scenes where they actually raise them so mm-hmm. that they kind of... And they get but, certain camera angles. Yes. Yep. So it doesn't look like it's that... Yep, but you can't do that in live theater. No, we can't. <laughs> we talk, we talk a lot of things about live theater. When we, we had When we did a, a show, we had water on stage, and the mm-hmm. kids couldn't believe it was real. Mm-hmm. They thought it was fake. Yep. So that's just fake, right? No, it's real water. No, See, it's wet. <laughs> See, look, I'm touching it. It's wet. <laughs> it is. It's a different feel. It really is. That's oh, I love live theater. I could never do on screen, just because it's it's not as raw. It's not as real. I don't know. It's definitely different. There's well, no question about the technique is different. Yeah, it is, and you get multiple tries. That's what I don't like. We don't get that in theater. That's what I love. I love that it's also, you know, you have to think on your feet if something goes wrong. You can't just have it always have does. It do <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I know. Everything will always go wrong. If there's something yep. that can go wrong, it will. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, absolutely. We were just talking because I didn't realize, you know, Kevin was big into tech. Mm-hmm. And because we said, you know, if anything goes wrong, it's always our fault. You know, like, you're not in the light. Well, guess whose fault it is? I can't move the light. doesn't matter. <laughs> it's our fault. Sorry. You know. Sound doesn't come off just exactly right. Guess what? It's our fault. <laughs> that's, that's, I have such respect for technicians because their job is like way harder than ours. But you have to do that too in your program, right? Yep. You have to do it all, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, that was actually why I couldn't actually make it to the in person auditions. I was teching a show right. for a class credit. Right. And that was, it was the most frustrating experience because it was for Pride and Prejudice. Right. And the only thing that we had to do was get the actors their props. Okay. And they were like, well, we can get our own props. So it was really just us sitting around doing nothing while they did the show for two weeks. And that was, it was the most frustrating thing because we're required to do it for right. class credit. Of course. But yeah. we weren't needed. So I was, weird. Just, I was just spending, you know, five hours of my time every night. You had to be there for around. the performance. Yep. Have to be there for all the tech rehearsals, all the performances. And because I was. You didn't set props then? No. no, no. they were like, I mean, as long as it's where it needs to be, we can get it. You don't have to hand it to us the second we walk off stage. We're not idiots. Okay. <laughs> but we have to be there. Yeah. So well, I bought a I coloring know. book. <laughs> well, you know, actually, that's in now. I, I was shocked about that. We had, yeah, we were doing rumors or some of that, and some of the actresses were, you know, were coloring. It's, it's a big It's a relaxing now. thing. Yeah. I just like turn on some music right. and get out my 64 pack because, right. you know, I had to buy the 64 pack. Of course. And I, I color mandalas because they're, they're, it's scientifically proven that coloring mandalas is right. um, anxiety and stress relief. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's really, really calming. Yeah. What kind of music do you listen to when show you're just tunes. off? It's always show tunes? Always show tunes. Oh, come on. There's got to be other kind of music that you like. I listen to the Broadway station in my car on Sirius XM. Uh, of course, yes. And when I'm not listening to that, I'm probably listening to Hamilton. We were just talking about Ham- <laughs> Hamilton because I know that Lynn Manuel has he's tried this kind of format before, but it didn't mm-hmm. turn out as well. I mean, why it's is still the right time? Why is it the right time for Hamilton now? Because I don't know. I think 
I don't even know how he managed to make it so perfect and hit right. the jackpot with it. Yeah. Because rap isn't really big right now. Yeah, but it, it's... And it's, it kills it off. He pulls it he off. He pulls it off. And I think, well, and I've talked to my parents about this because why didn't Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson sure. hit the gold mine? Right. And I think same it's, format. It, it's the same format, but I think it's because that was more angry. And this has happy and yes. and sad and mm-hmm. tearjerker, but also laugh. I don't know. It's the perfect mix. Mm-hmm. But it's such a new style of musical. I just, I don't know. I can't even comprehend how it's so popular, but it is. I don't understand it because I'm not into rap. Okay, me then either. I hate it. rap. Not in, not into but it. It's but it's my favorite musical. But I need to understand why it's hit a nerve I with the country. It. Maybe it's because it's historical and it's a great. I, it's because it's clever. I that's why it is I very like clever. It. It's because it's clever. It is very clever and it's smart. Movement is incredible. Mm-hmm. Although I saw, I see a slide. I know Taylor saw it a lot. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it after I, I saw the ticket to. prices. <laughs> I oh, I know the ticket this. prices are ridiculous, and I know people who have done. That tried to do the lottery tickets right. multiple, multiple times, right. and have never gotten it, right? And that's so frustrating. <laughs> now you've seen Broadway before. You've been seeing Broadway shows, right? Yes. What's your favorite Broadway show that you've seen? I musical or play. Either. I saw um, Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Okay, I saw it too. Yeah, London. Yeah. Yeah, I saw I saw it in, on Broadway with um, Alex Sharp before yeah. he won the Tony, mm-hmm. and it blew me away. I had never, that was the only play I've ever seen on Broadway. Mm-hmm. And it was so stunning and so real. Mm-hmm. And that's something that's so different between plays and musicals. The mm-hmm. musicals are so big and so beautiful and so bright and right. sparkly. Most of the time. Most yes. of the time. <laughs> I mean, even even the sad musicals are... Well, like Sweeney Todd. I mean, there's some pretty dark ones. Yeah, like, say Sweeney but Todd, they're that still kind of stuff, so right. larger than life. Yes. And plays are so real and so true. And it's so... I have such, such respect for that because it's so difficult. The hardest acting that I've ever done was realism Mm -hmm. and just the true, like, digging into your heart Mm -hmm. and becoming the person. And it's so easy to do that in a musical because it's just, a lot of the time, they're caricatures. Yeah, and you can go over the top, and that's okay Mm -hmm. for a musical most of the time. Yeah, but in a play, you can't really do that because it's not believable. Right. And it's, I think it's a lot harder to tell a story without song. It can. It's, it can it's, be. It can certainly be, yes. Um, my favorite musical that I've seen, though, was probably Finding Neverland. I saw it mm-hmm. in its fourth preview, mm-hmm. and it was so stunning. And, of course, Matthew Morrison was wonderful. Mm-hmm. And I, I would love to see it now, because mm-hmm. I saw it in previews, so it's probably changed a lot since right. I saw it. But... Like, the music was so good, and the choreography was beautiful, and it was just, there were, like, moments that gave me chills. Mm -hmm. And that's so rare. Mm -hmm. I love, I love that. It's the best when I get chills from, from a moment. Oh, that, uh, that, I mean, that's what life's made of, but especially uh, entertainment. I think, Mm -hmm. you know, I was driving to Dallas yesterday to see Mom, and I put on Legally Blonde, the musical, the Broadway Mm -hmm. version, and I had to turn it off within a minute (laughs) because I think our version is better. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. I, I think our version is better. I love our version. I love our I love our version. I love when you do it too. Well, it's, it's amazing. And it's a different interpretation, but that's okay. It's it, very different. It's, it's, it's each of them. You bring different things to the mm-hmm. part, and that's okay. But no, I can't listen to it. And Michael said the same thing. In fact, he said London version is even worse. <laughs> oh, I do not like the London <laughs> I said, I can't, version. I can't listen to you know. I hate the London version. I I made the mistake of buying the London version instead right. of the um, the original Broadway right. cast when I first right. got into the show. And I just couldn't stand it. Mm, he can't first, do it either. The first time I saw the show was at Tuts when they did right. it a few years ago. And mm. I was just, oh, I had stars in my eyes because yeah. I was like, I'm Elle Woods. This is perfect. <laughs> um, but. No, and sometimes I think that of the touring versions. We saw Le Mis for the first time mm-hmm. when it was touring. And and now I've seen it three or four times different ways. I only think of it from the first time we saw it. Mm-hmm. I understand why certain friends will only see a musical once. I'm not that way, but I understand why. Oh, I understand Because after too. that, it's ruined for them. It's always comparison of this versus that. I like this characterization better than this mm-hmm. or, or, or whatever. I saw Les Mis in New York yep. a few or last year, and it was the new version with the projections and everything. Mm-hmm. And I was in it a few years ago at Class Act. Right. And I just, I couldn't get the turning barricade out of my head. I don't know. I don't think you can do Les Mis without the big barricade. And, <laughs> you got to have the barricade. You got to have the barricade. You got to have the barricade. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's just something about it that's mm-hmm. so magical when that turntable turns and you see mm-hmm. the bodies in the back. Yep. It's just... It's one of those chill-worthy moments. You, you know, you say you were inspired a lot by the different shows that you, you, you've seen. Um, 
I, I think of it with this particular production. There's certainly then like some touching moments uh, as well, mm-hmm. which are done, which are done very well. It's and it's one of those few times when it almost comes out of a musical and almost becomes more play-like. I agree. And the sense there, I think the only moment that really is that way is right after Callahan tries to kiss yes. Al, mm-hmm. and she has that really touching moment. Yes, and that's she becomes a real person. Yeah. And she's really humanized because through the whole show, she's larger than life. And right. Just this big, blonde hurricane. Yes. And then for this this moment in time, it's almost like time suspended, and mm-hmm. she's a real person. I think that's so. That's my. It's my favorite moment in the show. We tear up every time we watch that that mm-hmm. scene because we are all there yep. in some way. Not that because we're L, but because we have this moments where we're all disappointed and we wonder, kind of wonder, moment. you know, what is it. Mm-hmm. What's life now for me? And it's so relatable. Yes. And that's why I think it's such a special moment is because everybody's been there. Right. Everybody knows what it's like to be disappointed and hurt mm-hmm. and let down. Right. And that's, I, th- I don't know, maybe that's why it's one of my favorite moments. But, you know, whenever I need a good cry, I turn on Legally <laughs> Blonde and I get in the shower and I just belt it out and I cry. <laughs> you know, Carol and I were playing with sound effects uh, uh, yesterday and we found the bathroom sound effect. <laughs> So we put this, we got this, you know, we got the soundtrack on. This is the bathroom sound effect. <laughs> That's uh, great. Uh, I don't think we need this one. Thank you very much. I feel like that would be so much fun. Oh my goodness! Why does everything sound better in the shower anyway? I don't know, but I I sing my best in the shower. There are times where I sing notes that I could never sing in real life. Really? In the shower, like where yeah. I belt higher than I've ever been able to before, and uh-huh. it's just. Where did that come from? I sound like Sutton Foster. <laughs> so maybe it's, you know, it's humidity. I, I remember uh, when Celine Dion opened in Vegas and they made a big deal about she had the humidity change left because it's so dry in Vegas, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, it yeah. really does have place havoc on voices. And she said, no, I want it, the humidity to do that. And so they moved up yep. the humidity level just so it, it would be different yep. for her. Because I can see it, it's awful there. And you would think, ah, oh, not that big a deal. And then you start singing, and you're like, oh my goodness, this is awful. That happened to me when I got to Colorado because it's so Real? dry oh, sorry, there. It's so dry there, yes. Yeah, I um, lost my voice for about three months wow. when I got there. Uh-huh. I couldn't sing. Mm-hmm. And the day it came back, I was in a voice lesson and I could sing you know, my normal, my right. normal big mm-hmm. range. And I just, I started crying. I was so happy mm-hmm. because I thought my voice was gone forever. Right. It's like, oh, I can't, I can't make the proper sounds. I can't do anything right because it's so dry and mm-hmm. it's such high altitude. You yep. know, I'm almost a mile high there. Yep. And so it was just, oh, it was terrifying because singing is, I mean, it's who I am. Right. And I thought I was going to lose that. It was, it was terrifying. And so, I mean, I know when the touring shows come to yep. Denver, they have oxygen tanks backstage. Because it's really? you can't breathe because the altitude. Right. So people yep. run off stage and get some oxygen and run back on. Because I mean, I get winded going up the stairs there. I remember, uh, you know, the Cherry Creek Arts Festival, so yep. Denver. Uh, I remember get, uh, going there, and all we did was do a little jog across the street, and that was enough to get winded. It's like, yep. whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> it's so I I think I'm in decent shape, and then I'm gonna go back to Colorado, and it's it's gonna be different. I'm gonna go up the stairs to get to my apartment and just not be able to breathe. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be hard, but it'll also be a lot cooler. So it'll yes, be, it will. It'll be, it'll be a it. lot cooler and a lot drier. Yeah, <laughs> less humid. When did you start studying music? I was thirteen. No, eleven. When I started voice lessons. Right. And I was nine when I started choir. Right. So you actually started music theory and stuff like that. Ah, uh, my music theory is not great mm-hmm. because I just every music theory, pretty much everything that I have has been from choir. I guess right. I took a piano proficiency class for mm-hmm. a semester this year, right. and I learned enough theory to pass that class. Right. Um, but I mean, I can read music really well. Right. I know key signatures. I know right. time. Um, you ever yeah. composed? R- wrote your own songs? Oh no, no. Don't want to. It's not my thing. Right. I don't know. I don't. I don't have the brain for it. I don't have. I don't have the viewpoint for well, it. Let's let's rephrase that. How do you express yourself? Do you, do you write diaries? Do you write? I mean, I sing. You sing? Yeah, I just sing. I don't know. I turn mm-hmm. something on and sing along with it. I like to make up my own it? harmonies. Oh yeah, I record myself a lot. So that you can look at. Do you have anything that from way back you could listen to and go like, I know what I was feeling when I sang that song. Uh, it's more like, oh my god, my technique was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I'm all about vocal technique. And so oh. when I listen to something that doesn't sound right, I'm just like, oh, ow, why? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I, I can definitely think about oh, what was happening when I sang this. What what yeah. was I feeling at that time? Yeah. And I mean, I I definitely relate certain things that happened in my life to times when I was in a show. Right. Like when I think of this role, I think of this time. Right. And when I think of this show, I think of these people that were in my life at this time. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. It's almost like and I I used to journal, but not so much anymore. Why not? I don't know. I just. You just grow out of it? Or yeah, I, you don't I guess see the value? so. Don't, um... I definitely see the value, and I think it's really yeah. helpful, but yeah. I just, I don't know. I just prefer to sing. Yeah. Like, my, my favorite thing when I'm sad is right. sing. get in a hot shower, crank up the show tunes, right. and 20 minutes later, I feel like a totally new person again. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's such a stereotypical, cliche, musical theater person answer, but it's so true. <laughs> well, I mean, it's all, you express yourself through song. Yeah. So and why like wouldn't it be a natural? Why, why wouldn't it be? Uh, a natural, you know, yeah. uh, thing. But I, but you say you don't compose right now. No, I just uh, I don't have I don't have the eye for it or the ear for it. Mm-hmm. I love to sing original works. Yes. But oh, really? Yeah. What's the uh, last original work you've done? You're thinking about? Um, somebody at school is writing a musical. Right. And they asked me to sing some of the stuff for them while they plunked it out on the piano. Yeah. And it was it was really cool. It's about um, the musical is about Louisiana in the twenties. Okay. And so. They just kind of, we just plunked through it a little bit. And yeah. we're like, oh, it's so cool to see it, to hear it come to life and to hear right. it be real. Yeah. I need to change a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's helpful because they're not, they're, yeah. they're a writer. Yes. And so they, you know, just, they needed somebody to help them sing. So when you're singing this, what, was there anything odd about it? Like uh, lyrics seem kind of odd or just the note, you know, like the progressions seem odd or? Well. Um, it was a lot of vocal gymnastics that didn't sit perfectly. Typical. Is, is this first time for them writing? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, we find this a lot for first time writers, and I, I should say for co- composers as well. Is that sometimes you do things that aren't authentic? Mm-hmm. They okay. it's forced a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it, it's a little forced. Yeah, yeah. That's, and, and it's, it's the way. It's, it's a, just it's, the way it's it is part of the process you have to go through. Yeah, you're trying to mirror what you know. Right. And I mean that's the that's the truth with any kind of writing, any kind of creation. Yes. You're gonna you're gonna try and mimic what you know until you mm-hmm. get your own style. Yes. Which I think is really interesting. Yeah, because to find your a voice. Yeah. Thing. Oh yeah, it, but I mean, we get a lot of plays that get su- submitted, mm-hmm. and we try to be really nice. <laughs> but, well, you know, but I mean, our, look, and mostly what I tell them is, look, we can't do it. We, mm-hmm. we just can't do it. Uh, but the, but the truth is, I think, and, and it's hard. Like so we were talking about rejection. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the same thing with writing. You're putting yourself out there. But you know what? It has to go through a lot of work and rework, and people don't get that. It when, does. We, when we workshop anything. Whether it's a play, a musical, or whatever, and you're writing it from scratch, you know it's gonna be write and rewrite and rewrite again and again and again. Well, I mean, and you will get so tired of doing that. That's you know, the but... process with any new show. Absolutely. Yeah. Like it takes sometimes ten years for a new show to come to Broadway. If it gets it there at all. If it gets there at all, because mm-hmm. there's just it's workshop and rewrite and workshop and mm-hmm. rewrite and workshop and rewrite and then previews and rewrite and previews mm-hmm. and rewrite. It just yeah, it's getting it's the exact right formula. Mm-hmm. And once it's right, you'll know. But it's hard to get it right. Yeah. And with all good writers, they never think it's finished. Nope. Neil Simon never thinks it's finished. <laughs> He's always working. On always reworking. <laughs> always trying uh, to fix. Always, you know, always reworking. So where have you traveled to? I've done a lot of traveling. I've I've been really fortunate that my mm-hmm. parents mm-hmm. have taken my sisters and I with them a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been when I was younger. I went to London and Paris. I've been to several places in Italy, mm-hmm. several places in Germany, mm-hmm. Mexico. I've actually never been to Canada, which is odd. Really? Considering it's like attached to our country. I've never been to Canada. <laughs> um, but a few places in the U.S. Less places in the U.S. than I have around the globe. Right. Which is kind of odd. No, for some people that's the way. It's true for us. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's so many good places in the U.S. to go. There are. But, but there are also a lot better limited places. Limited time. Limited time. And I like to go over the pond yeah. i love italy italy's my favorite it's a great we love italy they're you know they're so welcoming if you can speak any italian oh, they love you they humor you so much oh my goodness we went to a, a restaurant in, in london it was just a fast food place mm-hmm. and they were staffed by italians and all we said was buongiorno like, and that oh! was it oh my goodness they saw him so i can't get past <laughs> you're so cute you're Americans. so cute i can't just, yeah you know and then you go to france it's and different you try to speak french and they're just like 
you're a stupid American. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a time I was, I was I had high school French, and I went to a restaurant trying to order, and I knew enough to as soon as the waiter heard me, he turns to our, our host and he goes. I can't understand him. He speaks so badly. <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> In <awful>. French. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I just. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> but yeah, the Italians, they just love you. They love you. I i could spend years in italy yeah like especially venice i've been to venice twice and it's my favorite place i don't know what it is about venice i love oh, venice. i love it the water because maybe there's no cars that's the great it's, thing it's because there's no cars i yes. think it's it's so different mm -hmm. and it's so quiet and so beautiful and it's, unfortunately hardly any venetians live they can't afford oh, to I live know. there the only time we actually saw venetians it was christmas time mm -hmm. and they had a little christmas fair and then all the natives did come out, but most of the time they just work there, which is sad. Yep. They can't even live in the city that really belongs to them. I know, but there's something about the masks everywhere and all the glass. Mm -hmm. Oh, the glass is so gorgeous. Yeah. And I have a mask hanging on my wall at home. <laughs> <laughs> Good memories. Great memories. If you get to travel someplace, where would you want to go to? That's a tough question. I have no idea. No I wanna... burning desire to go anywhere. No. I just want to see the world. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I want to plan like a, a really long trip right and just go through europe mm -hmm. and hit everywhere mm -hmm. um it's been a really long time i barely remember my trip to london because i was so young right so i want to go back oh god yeah and remember that because yeah. i was i got sick while i was there i got food poisoning oh, yeah we were yeah. going to see chicago in london, in london <laughs> on the west end <laughs> <laughs> and we went to an Italian restaurant beforehand, yeah. and I wasn't feeling great, so I just had gelato, because uh, ice creams, you know. And we went and saw the show, and we were walking back to our hotel, and I threw up in an alley. Uh, because I, 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 don't, I don't know what it was. I think I got food poisoning or something, but then, I don't, it was awful. And But I was so young, I barely remember it. You need to go back. I want to go back. That's top of my list. I want to go back to London. I was just telling Kevin that on our honeymoon, we went to London. And they gave us tickets to 42nd Street. I'm going, 42nd Street? I can see that in the States. Yeah. So they, we got pretty good seats. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lead got pregnant, so the understudy was doing the performance. And the reason I remember the understudy, because her name was Catherine Zeta-Jones. Oh! And we had no clue who that was. I mean, she was a nobody then. Yeah. But she could tap like you would believe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Incredible voice, rail thin. And so every, you know, later on she does Chicago. And we're like, I didn't know she could sing it down. We knew that when she was nobody. We saw her. We saw when she was nobody. Street. In fact, we went back to the theater to visit the Drury Lane Theater, and they go like, "Didn't Catherine Zeta Jones?" And they went, "Yeah, she did do that like in 1987." It's like oh, <laughs> all those years ago. Before oh she was my anyone. goodness, she was all she was awesome, the, awesome. The quality of shows is so different on the West End. Mm -hmm. It's so different. Like my, it's parents, very intimate. Yeah, it is. It's a lot. It's a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. My parents just saw Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and they yep. said it was night and day difference between yeah. Broadway and West End. Yeah. That it's just, it's so much more intimate and so much mm -hmm. smaller. Yes. And they really, I'm more of a fan of the big theaters myself. Mm -hmm. But they're just two totally different things. Oh, no. It's, I mean, there you could go and there'll be school children mm -hmm. on a weekday at a performance. Yep. I used to like to go to London on business and see a show, but not, just, just go. Let's see what's available. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know. During Jacoby's doing something. Oh, what the heck? Let's go see him. Yeah, I mean, that's just, how you see a lot of good shows, too. You just go see whatever. Inspector calls. And then, let's go see it. Yep. And it it was a great way to see theater. And it's not that expensive. It's really not, especially Broadway, if you do yeah. TKTS. Mm -hmm. It's a great way. I mean, that's how yeah. I got orchestra seats to see Pippin mm -hmm. with uh, Patina Miller on Broadway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was really great for, like, 45 bucks. Yeah. Orchestra seats. Yeah. So. No, it, it, it's, it's a great time. It's worth it. Yeah, for that reason alone, we love going to New York. <laughs> just go, just, just go, let's go New see York. a show, walk around. It's different. I don't want to live there. Oh, trust me. Oh, I can't wait to live there. No, but we have friends that we, we do. Uh, I guess the, the, we said we did the interview series. One of them is actually talks about the whole audition process there. Mm -hmm. You know, how to kind of make it through, you know, the whole process and make sure you, you're ready for when they need you. Yeah. Which could be hours. <laughs> yeah, Days. No. Then, but, you know, just to kind of get you so you're peaked just at the right time yep. for, your, for, your, for your audition. Uh, but that's right. No, it's, it's a fascinating place. All it people, really is. Yeah. I love it. I Every time I go, I just can't mm -hmm. wait to make my home there. Because mm -hmm. I'm such a busy body. And I, I always want to be going somewhere and doing there's something. There's plenty of things to do. And that's the thing about New York is that there's always something to do. There's mm -hmm. always somewhere to be. 
sky. And that's so intriguing and so fascinating to me. And I just, oh, I'm so excited to live there. Let's talk about characterization. How do you approach a character? Well, I read the script. Mm -hmm. And at school, we uh, learned a new way to look at the script. So mm -hmm. I take it and I go through and I say, okay, on this line, what what's my verb? Yeah. To, you know, to manipulate or mm -hmm. to to confuse or whatever. Right. And so I go through and I take chunks right. and I verb my right. chunks. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I like figure out how I'm going to mirror the character and how the best way that I can say it is to let go of myself and to try my best to step into the character's shoes. Mm -hmm. And that's so difficult. It's the hardest thing to do, to let go of yourself. And mm -hmm. with this character, it's a lot easier because Elle is so much of me. Right. But, I mean, I previously about two years ago, played the baker's wife right. into the woods. And that's right. something that I have no idea right. about because, you know, right. I've never had a child. I've right. never been married. Right. And so that was really, really difficult for me to step into the character's shoes and mm. to understand what she was feeling and mm -hmm. have changed from she to I right. is the hardest thing. And I always think, you know, if you forget, if you can't remember performing the show, right. then you've done your job. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That almost sounds like a Meryl Streep kind of moment. <laughs> they ask her, you know, like, what do you do? What, how do you get in the zone? She says, I have no clue. <laughs> no, it's true, though. Like, I just go on stage and from that moment on I'm not me. Carolyn says that too. She says her best moments are when she's in the zone mm -hmm. and she has no clue how she got there yep. or whatever. Or, or even remember the performance. Yeah, no, there yeah. there have been times where I get stuck in my head and right. I can't get out of my head and that's right. when my voice cracks or right. Right. when I forget a line. But right. there are times when I just completely am not myself right. and I don't remember a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, it came up good and they said, oh man, that was awesome. Yeah. like, I wish I knew what it was, but I don't know. Yeah, so. I mean, the first the first time I ran the show in costume mm -hmm. was when I felt that, really right. the first time. Right. And that's kind of odd because you'd think that I would be really stressed about the costume changes because there are a yeah. lot of them. Yes, there are a lot. But there was just a moment when I was singing Legally Blonde with Austin where I right. just completely was not Catherine. I right. was Elle. And it right. was one of my favorite moments that I've ever experienced on stage because I was singing through my tears mm -hmm. and I walked off stage and I was like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was the best that I've ever sang that song. And I was like, well, I wish there had been an audience to see that. <laughs> oh, there'll be plenty of audiences. There we will. got that man. Th these tickets are selling like crazy. They really are. I, I look every it. day, and there's just no yeah. We look. Believe sold. me, we look at it too. We're kind of like, oh my goodness, it was mm -hmm. 160 yesterday. There's 100. Yeah, oh, just, I know. It just goes I, like I'm that. Check, yeah. I check in the morning and before I go yeah. to bed, and it's. They're just going. They're selling so well. <laughs> That's great. It, I mean, you guys deserve it. It's it's a great show, but it has a nice, you know, message as mm -hmm. well too. We were talking about that with with Kevin. Let's talk about the the, the message. I mean, most of the time, yeah, musicals are can be kind of fluff and and it's yeah. a and there's nothing wrong with that. It's an entertaining. But every now and then, you can still get that message through, and we don't have to beat people over the head with it. It's super to get that true. Message. Well, especially with this show because it's yeah. so fun, and mm -hmm. you kind of get you slip the message in there without. Yeah, kind of easy. <laughs> like it's just okay. Spoonful of sugar. Here we learned. go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so. And I think that the message of this show is so important, especially now. Especially uh, now, uh, yes. with all the media and everything. Like, young girls are just, there's a lot of pressure to be perfect and yeah. to not be themselves. Right. And That's the true message, for all of us. Yeah. Especially girls, yeah. Especially especially young girls because, well, especially young people in general. Yes. They're so malleable. Mm -hmm. And with this, I think the message of this show is don't ever let anybody change you. Don't mm -hmm. ever change yourself for someone. Right. And I think that that's so important because there have been times in my life that I've tried to change who I was to impress other people. Right. And that's, it's just... The worst thing you can possibly do to yourself. Well, on the other hand, there is this element of though of how each character changes and improves mm -hmm. for the better. It, exactly. And it, in some ways, it is for someone, but it's not in the way you would think. I exactly. Mean, it's almost like we have a set of false values that we want, and the true values that we really need that we really need to work on. Those those are the things you want uh -huh. to hold those dear those hold dear to those and stay away from those false values. Well, but it's and so those hard to get real away values are going to come through no matter yes. what you do. Yeah. And those, I mean, when you strip everything away, right. what's left? Right. And I think that's what's really important mm -hmm. is when you strip away, you know, the costumes and the makeup and the hair and everything, what's left? Right. And if you like what you see mm -hmm. when you look at what's left. 
Sometimes it's, we do, sometimes we don't. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> One, it's if you can look and look at yourself in the mirror and say, I like what I see. I'm mm-hmm. happy with the person that I am. Yeah. And that's really, really important, especially now. Yes. And I don't know. I, I've struggled a lot with loving myself and I've finally gotten to the place where I don't I'm know anybody so, who hasn't. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm so happy with me and I'm so right. happy with where I am in my life mm-hmm. and the direction that I'm going. Mm-hmm. And that's such a nice feeling to me. To just feel, oh, everything's going right. I'm so happy. Mm-hmm. It's been forever since I felt like this. I just feel like I'm on cloud nine. <laughs> it's wonderful. Hey, let's talk about your parents here. You said they're in medicine. Yes. So what do they think about this, that you're going into musical theater? They're the most supportive people. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, during all of my college auditions, both yeah. of them took off work for every wow. single time we had to get mm-hmm. on a plane and go somewhere. Mm-hmm. And they came to every single audition did everything I need. You know, we had a pre-audition ritual and a post-audition ritual. Mm -hmm. Dad would get me a Diet Coke and a water before every audition. Okay. (laughs) It's weird, but I sing better when I've had a Diet Coke. I don't know why. (laughs) And it has to do with the caffeine, right? (laughs) No, I don't know. But it's just, I think it clears all the phlegm and it's it's just my ritual. Interesting. And if I had a good audition, we would go out to dinner. If I had a bad audition, we'd go eat apple pie. (laughs) Okay. And um, Is that your favorite pie or no? I love apple pie. Why apple apple pie? Apple pie with vanilla ice cream. I don't know. It just tastes like home. Really? Yeah. Does your mom make apple pie or is she's not? No? No. I mean, it's just, I don't know. My, we have it at family gatherings every yeah. single time. And so, I don't know, it just tastes like home to me. Mm. But they're so supportive and they've bought tickets to every single show that I'm in. Mm-hmm. And they're, uh, I mean, for the Saturday night show, they bought like 40 tickets. Because <laughs> everyone and their mom is coming. But of course. But this is interesting. Now, we've always noticed a lot of uh, group tickets. Mm-hmm. But this show especially... I mean, you know, we were looking at ticket sales. We were kind of disappointed at first. We feel like, we're not selling that well. And uh, the box office manager says, no, it's not what you think. And he was showing me these huge blocks. Yeah. Huge blocks. I'm like, what the heck is that? What's oh, a group. Yeah. A group. Not groups. A group. There are lots. Of, I've seen that there are lots of groups. Like, I've seen twice now that there's just a huge bus outside after the Uh-oh. show. But that, we've worked that. But we didn't expect that. Mm-hmm. We didn't think that this would be the kind of thing that buses would come to see. And I mean, older folks. Well, because okay, it's yeah. not. It's. It's so current. Yeah. But it's a movie that, I mean, 15 years ago yesterday, yeah. it came out. I can't so, believe it's 15 years. Oh, I know. I cannot believe it's that. It's been forever. Yeah. And I mean, I remember seeing it in theaters. I remember having to beg my mom because it was PG-13. Oh. <laughs> and I was young. Right. So I remember having to beg my mom to let me go see it with my sister. So how old were you then? Since I, four? It was 2001. Three? So I was seven. Okay. Because I was born in 96. Yeah. Well, it was, you know, like. Let's say no, I, Michael, I yeah. Not, oh, a, yeah, it's about the same six. age. No, I was seven. It's about the same age as Michael. But I was thinking like Aria, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. uh, not uh, Scarlett's uh, daughter or um, Cosette's uh, sister. Yes. She knows all the dances. She knows all the dances. She knows all the dances. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm going to step in for someone. On <laughs> <laughs> You're so tiny. <laughs> this show is not for children. <laughs> oh, it's just that one. But she's, you know. Oh, she's so cute. She's so stinking cute doing those. Oh, and I know, and I know it just all goes way over her head. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. (laughs) Yeah, from a Disney perspective, yeah, listen, there's something, you know, this is, it's, they enjoy this part of the music, and then there's Mm -hmm. other stuff, yeah, we get, but I'm glad you don't get it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's, it's funny for those of us who understand, for those of us who are under, old enough to know. And then, you know, the little kids just like all the pink. Well, they like the paint, they like the dancing uh-huh. and, the, uh, and the music and stuff like that. And it is high energy music. It really oh, is. So high energy. I walk off stage after a curtain call and my legs are shaking. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so tired. <laughs> I remember we were printing this off. It was like 180 pages of music. Yep. What the heck? Is going on? And it just goes and it goes and goes. It just goes and goes and goes. Like yeah. the photographer came right. on, I guess it was oh, last Dave Clements, Wednesday. yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he said, How much is Elle on stage? And I said, Well, whenever she's not on stage, she's changing clothes. Yeah. So, just, she's on stage the whole show. Yeah. And it's by far the most exhausting role I've ever played in my entire life. So how many costume changes do you have? 16. Okay, I think that's the new record. Because I think for us, the record was in the 10s. Yeah. And it was quite a bit for, like, always Patsy Cline, like, probably 10 or 12 costume changes. So that definitely breaks the record. I've never had to change on stage before. Uh, yeah. So oh, was... yeah. And by the way, yeah, there's also a change on stage. Oh, there are two. There are two. Because (laughs) in the first, you know seven or eight minutes that we're on right. stage right there's you know a six second change right um and then the other one is the one in chip on my shoulder where we yes. change behind the set right and it's just oh 
I mean, my parents came and watched a rehearsal before we put the curtain up between the sets, and they said, Catherine, we saw your butt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. It's a right. fast change. Yeah. So I'm glad we put that curtain up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, parents kind of noticed that. I think uh, t- uh, Taylor's, oh, it's Mar- uh, Marisol, yeah. was having to prepare her husband. So that, okay, you know, Taylor kind of does these moves and you know just try to prep him for you just know, know. You'll, be, you'll be you'll you'll be he's okay <laughs> <laughs> okay but still she wanted to prep play, lay the groundwork oh, yeah. so it, it was okay oh yeah i mean i'm the youngest so my dad's like oh it's so odd seeing my my youngest daughter i think that's yes we have a hard time with that <laughs> <laughs> i mean but he's both my parents are such closeted stage parents they they just eat it up Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, we're coming to every single show. We're going to come to your rehearsals. We're going to come watch. We're going to do this and this. No, no, you don't really need to do that. I'm like, I mean, if you really want... Because I wasn't in a show last summer, and so they're right. like, we feel like this is our real goodbye to your childhood in community theater. Because I, um, I didn't do anything last summer, and so yeah. they, they felt like this is their real farewell to my, to my childhood. It's hard for us parents when our kids are growing up. I was like... But you know, it's nice because mm-hmm. now, uh, like for Michael, you know, is here. Uh, it's a chance for us to be friends now. It, it, I mean, they'll always be our, you know, our, our, you know, yeah. you always, guys are always going to be our children. But now you can be our friends. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what well. my dad that's said. Neat. He said, "My favorite thing in the world. I'm really good at having adult children mm-hmm. because all of a sudden we can hang out together. Right. And it's not just me being your dad. It's right. also me being your friend. Right. Which is I, I really like being." Mm-hmm. an adult in their eyes. I mean, I'm only 19, so it's yeah. not like I'm super grown up, Yeah. but I'm the baby. Right. So and they're just blown away. They're like, oh my God, our baby's almost 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, our baby's on 22. They're like, oh no. Did you have a rebellious phase? I really didn't. Oh, come on. I, it, there's I, no time when you, you just talk back to your parents or you wouldn't talk to them. I mean, I'm really sassy. The whole shoulder. Yeah. I mean, I'm super sassy, Yeah. but so are they. I mean, I don't know. I... Compared to my sisters, my sisters both had really rebellious faces, right. but I just, I don't know, I've always been good friends with my parents. Did you see how they raised each of the kids differently? I can do so much more. I have been able yes. to do so much more than my oldest sister, and she's so bitter about it. <laughs> yes. She's yep. like, oh, when I was your age, I wasn't allowed to do this and this and this, and right. I had to be home by 1130. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't have a curfew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've seen that too. Yeah. yeah no, that and too. it's, I don't know, it's really great because they trust me. Yeah. And I've never given them a reason not to, mm. which is nice. Yeah. Because, you know, all I've discovered that all you really have to do is keep them in the loop mm-hmm. and just ask. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I'm going to go do this and I'm staying at this person's house tonight. Mm. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm. And they're like, okay, be safe, behave and have fun in that order. Yeah. They say that to me <laughs> yeah. every single time I leave the house. Be safe, behave and have fun in that order. You got a t-shirt for that? I wish. <laughs> I'm going to make my dad a shirt. That's a good idea. We used to have, we wanted to make a shirt for that for the or when you go on a plane, mm-hmm. because every time we bring, you know, the kids on the plane, it's like, do you know that, you know, the seat has to go by the window? Do you know they have yep. to be about, you know, so we wanted to wear a t-shirt with every answer that it possibly <laughs> said, you know, it's like, yes, the seat goes by the, the window. Yes, he has a ticket. Yes, it is a seat belt. Yeah. <laughs> Got tired of answering the same questions over it's and over true, again. It's true, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's really true, especially when you travel a lot, Yeah. which, I mean, I have. I traveled a lot when I was younger, not so much yeah. now, yeah. other than flying back and forth between Colorado and here, Yeah. or driving. It's a long drive. How long is that drive? 20 hours. That's a long drive. Yeah. In my Mini Cooper. <sighs> Show tunes all the way? Yeah. I mean, on the, <laughs> the, when we drove, both of my parents and I yeah. drove last summer, and yeah. we listened to 12 different musicals on the drive. <laughs> 12 different. <laughs> what is your least favorite musical? Oklahoma. Really? Don't Why? even have to think about it. I've been in it Why? twice. Okay. I hate it. Why? Because there's no redeeming qualities about any of the characters. <laughs> The music's not great. Like, even even the good guys right. are jerks. Like, Curly's a jerk. <laughs> he tells Judd to hang himself. And um, Lori's just selfish. Like, uh-huh. the, the best character in the show is Judd, and he's the villain. <laughs> I just, I despise that show. There's no redeeming qualities about it. It's too long. It's like three and a half hours long. Was it the first show that you ever saw? No. It was my first show that I was in. That you were in? Yeah. And I, it was the first show that I did in high school as right. well. Um, it's just, it's an awful show. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first show I ever knew about, I think, as, as mm-hmm. a musical. Um, 
but I think you're, you know, kind of looking back on it after you kind of see different musicals and you see the different genres that you obviously have a different uh, take on it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I'm not so. too wild about cats either, but that's a whole, that's a whole nother ball of wax. To me, I mean, there's one good song in there and the rest I could do without. Exactly. <laughs> and the one good song in there is so overplayed and so overdone. Of course, because you're, you're waiting for it. Exactly. It's like, okay, yeah. here's the song. We can leave now. I don't know, maybe it has to do with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Uh, and for us, we've never been big Andrew Lloyd Webber fans. Not because he doesn't write well or anything like that. It's just, he's into spectacle. Yep. And I'm not necessarily into spectacle. I don't know if it's a bad thing. Sometimes yeah. you want that. I mean, I my dream role of all yeah. dream roles is Christine Daae in yeah. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. So that show will always have a special place in my heart. But I, I love Joseph. Yeah. I'm not huge on Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm -hmm. Not huge on cats. Mm -hmm. I really don't like cats. But I love Phantom. Mm -hmm. It's the only show that I ever sat through on Broadway with my mouth just hanging open the whole time. Because it's so beautiful. And yeah. it's that's such like a... I just love Phantom of the Opera. But it's so true. I love Phantom of the Opera. And the first time I watched it, I was like nine. It was the movie. And I pulled out like three teeth while we were watching it. Because they were loose. I had loose teeth and I just sat there and wiggled them. And so that's that's my memory of watching the movie. <laughs> the just losing teeth. Losing teeth. Losing teeth watching Phantom. Yep. Uh, oh my goodness. It's an odd memory to have, I know. <laughs> so in the musical theater program that, that, that's coming up, I mean, obviously you're going to get more chances to be in stuff. Yes. But they must, uh, what other things are you going to have to start working on? I mean, because you have, like I said, we're going to work on everything, right? So yeah. you probably have to work on set. You probably got to work on costumes. You probably got to work, you know, all these other aspects, lighting. Mm -hmm. Well, part of our class credits, it's called individual performance, right. IP for right. short. And that's our tech credits. Right. As a musical theater major, I only have to get, I only have to take it twice. Okay. So I've only taken, I've already taken it once. The next time right. I'll just take it as my senior year. Right. And I like to do cruise because that way I don't have to do shop hours. Right. And with shop hours, you have to spend, you know, a certain amount of hours. Right. And I just much prefer knock it all out in a two week block of time. Right. And then be done with it. So I'll, I like doing run crew. I like doing costumes. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, that's what I did first semester or second semester this year. I did costumes on one show and mm -hmm. then props on another. So, I mean, I don't know. We just were required to do some sort of right. technical aspect. Do you have a, like it's a costume history? I think there's a costume. Uh, I know people always talk. That that's the dreaded class. At really? Sam is costume history class because it's hard as hell. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, it's hard as hell because there's so much detail. That's our. And you got to uh, get it right. That's our play script analysis class. Right. Really? Yeah, we have to read plays and then do really, really in depth mm -hmm. like writing on them. Right. And that's oh, it was the hardest class ever. It, I am lucky that I survived that class. It was so hard. <laughs> um, but you get it out of the way freshman year. So we don't we don't have a costume history, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. We don't have a whole lot of really, really difficult classes. We just have a lot of classes that are very demanding. Well, I'm not just saying that it's supposed to be difficult or not. Yeah. I, I think that's it's just a lot. up to the professor. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like, just a how lot. do they want to make it? I think it probably makes a difference if you have a passion for that particular subject or not. Exactly. Well, yeah. and that's what everybody says about musical theater history. They're like, oh, it's so much. And I'm just like, no, it's not. It's not that bad. It's just really fun. Like, I color-coded all my notes. Right. I'm one of those people. <laughs> so what are you going to do after this when you head back to school? Stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I mean, I'm obviously going to be in class. I'm taking 18 hours yeah. this semester. It'll be busy. Yeah, yeah, I'll be really busy. And... You know, there aren't, they aren't doing a lot of shows that are for my type. Right. They're doing Spring Awakening and West Side Story. Okay. And I don't really fit that well into either of those. Mm -hmm. And they're doing some plays. So I'll probably, there's a dinner theater that's mm -hmm. about 20 minutes from the school that I'll probably be doing some auditions for. They're doing Evita and 42nd Street. Mm -hmm. And um, they called me, they've called me back once now. And it's a professional theater. So. Mm -hmm. It would be really awesome to get to work for them. They pay well. It's a really great experience. And mm -hmm. then I'm thinking I'll probably come back next summer to do Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll look forward to having you back. Yeah, because I really, be I've never done a show here until now, and right. I really have enjoyed it. It's right. We try to keep it welcoming uh, place. Yeah. There's there's a huge range of talent from people who've never done stuff before, professionals. But mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, we're just a bunch of friends who like to do stuff and support the community. It really, it really has felt like such a family. Like, I've done theater at places that haven't felt welcoming at all. Mm. And I mean, that first rehearsal that I came, because I was two weeks late, because yeah. yeah. I was still at school. Right. And that first rehearsal, it was just everybody was so nice and everybody was so welcoming, because I didn't know anybody. Right. 
except Lane. I'd done a show right. with Lane before. Right. And so it was just so nice to feel that because, I don't know, you can easily get into the petty theater world. It always does that. We've, we've actually talked about that, the differences between Dallas and Houston theater uh, that way. And um, our, our big thing is that Houston supports financially mm -hmm. their theater is better than Dallas, but mm -hmm. Dallas is much more welcoming. Really? I don't know. And Houston is getting better, but... It, it can be really petty here, and I don't, I don't understand why it has to be that way. I just know that it is. Mm -hmm. I, I've never understood it. I mean, I get the whole competition thing, but yeah. I mean, I've done theater with my best friends for years, and we've yeah. always you know, had the healthy competition, but been right. so supportive of each right. other. And I think that's the key thing is healthy competition is really great, mm. but you have to be supportive of your fellow people. Yeah. And I, Tina and I were talking about it the other day about how in order to succeed in this world, you do have to be a little bit selfish. Yeah. And a little bit out for yourself, mm. but you can do that without being petty, right? You can st you still need to be true to yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And I, my parents have told me for years that I need to have more of that killer instinct that I'm too nice, but being nice is never gonna hurt me. I, I think it. I, I think of it more as a defensive tactic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never like playing politics in in office, but you need to know enough not to be naive or so, mm -hmm. to be able to defend yourself exactly right? against people who will who think nothing of putting you down mm -hmm. just because it will further their career. Well, and who will try to sabotage yeah. you. Absolutely, yeah. Which In the wink of an eye, they, they do it. And so they won't you feel have bad to, about it. No, they won't feel bad about it, but you need to be able to defend against that. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you can't be true to yourself. If you're a genuine and nice person, then you should still be a nice person, just know how to defend yourself against exactly. those kind of tactics. Exactly. So, interesting. So how do you know Tina? Have you ever worked with her before? Or I no? had never worked with her before. Yeah. I um, My mom actually sent me a text when I was in Colorado. She said, hey, they're doing Legally Blonde. Yeah. At the Creighton, yeah. you should contact the director. Mm -hmm. um, and so I sent an email. How did your mom find out about that? She is just looking because she wanted me to come home this summer. Of course. We always want our kids yeah. to come home. Like, come home, please. Let's see what we can do to get you home. Well, I don't know if their methods, I don't know if their reasoning for me coming home were exactly pure. They wanted me to watch the dogs while they went to Europe for two weeks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that they didn't have to pay to board them. You know, there are boarding places that do a really nice job. Oh, I know, so. but they saved a lot paying me to do it instead of. Of course. Yeah. That. And, yeah. and it's it's been really nice to be yeah. home. But she looked all around at who was still doing auditions. Right. and. I knew I wasn't going to be able to make it back. So I contacted oh. Tina. Mm. I said, I really would love to be a part of this show. Yeah. And she came back with, well, here's here's what we can do for you. Yeah. And then it sort of fell through. And then she got back in contact and she said, all right, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to come and you're going to do an audition in person for me yeah. before, mm. uh, before I can officially give you the role. Yeah. And I was so excited because I've always wanted to play Elle. Oh, my goodness. And you do know who you were auditioning for? No, I mean, t well, you didn't know Tina. I didn't know Tina. But you don't know her history. I didn't know her Tina, history until she told me about Tina it. Tina used to do Broadway. Oh, I know. She's a contemporary of Barbara Streisand. Mm -hmm. When Barbara couldn't even make it, she was doing Broadway. Uh -huh. This oh, is I when know. there was no mics and this stuff. Tina's, if you, you were a belter, that's why we got you, because there aren't any mics. Tina's got a very impressive history. Yeah. Like, it's but you would never insane. suspect that, because she's, she's just so she's welcoming, so down, to earth. down to earth. Well, when I told her that she's there, my yeah. goal. I want to work yeah. until I'm ready to settle down, and then I want to direct a community theater, because community mm. theater has changed my life so much. I want to be able to do that for other people. Because, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the sole reason that I'm doing this for a living, mm. is the directors that I've had in the past, and the mm. experiences that I've had, and what I've learned. Mm. And I think if I can touch anybody's life... Mm -hmm. I want to be able to do that. It's awesome. Thank you so much for, for being here. We'll look forward to seeing you uh, next year. I'm going to ask you what we've been asking everyone. If heaven exists, what do you want God to say when you get to the pearly gates? That I have done a good job and that he is proud of me. And give you a hug? Yes. Make you sing? Or is that, you know, I got this tape of you doing <laughs> this. Do you remember this? Do Click. you remember doing this? <laughs> and you go, oh, God. <laughs> Vocal technique. Vocal te <laughs> I'm all about the vocal technique. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, thanks so much for being Thank here with so us. Thank you so much.